That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about In the Earth, the latest film directed by Ben Wheatley, which was uh, financed through Neon uh, and has premiered January 29th, 2021 at the 2021 Sundance Film Festival. Uh, his, ben Wheatley's last film is Kill List? No? Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's not... He did Kill List? Yes. Oh. That was in 2011. Oh. His last film was Rebecca, which we reviewed. Did you just say that? No. Oh. Why would I know? Because we reviewed it. I saw Rebecca? Yeah, we reviewed it. What was that about? Oh my god. Like, we just reviewed it? <laughs> Several months ago? Oh, you know I don't remember that. But, uh, so I've seen two of his films. Rebecca. I've, I've dreamt of Manderley again with Army Hammer and, uh... Mrs. De Winter. Oh, come where on the now. house is like haunted. Yeah, come on now, Rebecca. Okay. okay. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, Ben Wheatley, yes, Kill List is probably my favorite film of his, which I did uh, have you watch at one point, um, and has directed all kinds of other films since then. He's pretty uh, perennial, almost always a, a film every year. So it's no surprise that he uh, started writing something and uh, completely finished it during the pandemic. Uh, this was an interesting film. I really liked the story. Uh huh. Okay, the basic plot is it's set during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and although that's it's never directly named, although we really we realize that people have had to be quarantined before they get to where they are. And... Well, and then uh, at one point someone is given like a nasal swab, and then they yes. test negative. So I'm, we're assuming it's like COVID, but um, there's a like research scientist named Martin mm -hmm. who is working on. What, what, what is his research about? About crop efficiency. Crop namely, e namely, this certain kind of substance that grows on roots and everything's... It's, it's explained to us and everything's kind of correct, co connected. The metaphor that's used is a brain. So he was working with some person named Dr. Wendell mm -hmm. and hasn't heard from her in some time. And maybe because of the pandemic or whatever, like time was allowed to pass before he realized he needs to go check on her. So he is accompanied by a park ranger named Alma. Mm -hmm. Who plays Martin? Uh, Joel Fry. And who plays Alma? Ella Torquia, who was uh, in Midsummer. That's right. She yeah. is in Midsummer. Yeah. I liked. I thought she was the best part of this movie. I well, I like Haley Squires as Doctor Wendell a bit too for different reasons. But yeah, Ella Torquia is really striking, and I think the most logistical. Um, yeah, I, I think she walks away with being the most successful part of the film. So Alma and Martin make their way to the location where Dr. Wendell is. And as they're, you know, they, they make it to the area, they have to spend the night like camp. And while they're asleep, they're assaulted. And we don't see who assaults them, but they beat the hell out of both of them and take all their stuff. Well, they take their shoes. Notably. Well, their shoes and... They, no, they take their seeds and they yeah, take... Yes, but, yeah. but notably it's the, the shoes that kind of screw them So over. in the morning, uh, when they wake up, they attempt to flee when they are um, confronted by a man named Zach. Well, first, Martin injures himself. He, gets he hurts his foot. And you miss the very opening moments of the film where we learn it's presumably Martin who's taking shards of that stone uh, and putting them in the earth. So it's, I think we're led to believe that what sliced, what lacerated Martin's foot was a piece of the stone in the earth. And the stone's important, but... Zach offers them like refuge and says he can help and initially he does he helps bandage up uh, Martin's foot but then Zach drugs them and then he like dresses them up in these like in this ritualistic garb and mm -hmm. takes weird photos of them so clearly something's afoot and they're all developed in time for him when they wake up <laughs> He explains that there's something in the forest that's calling him calling people like like whatever it is, Mother Nature. He's he sounds like he's talking crazy. So and Alma and Martin are convinced Zach will kill them. So they devise a plan to escape. They're successful mm -hmm. when they run into the area where Doctor Wendell is, and she's well alive and well. Her research hub, which is called ATU three two seven A. She explains like, oh, oh, Zach, that's my ex-husband, <laughs> which took me all the way out. Mm -hmm. And her attitude about him is like, oh, that's just my ex-husband. And they're like, well, he tried to kill us and he killed another group of people because we see some dead bodies. Um, but she's like, don't worry about it. Like, he's just... He won't you know, come here. Yeah, he won't come here. So then she's explaining her research and what happened. And 
we come to find out that she's on the same bullshit Zach is on. But from a different angle. But from more from more of a scientific angle. However, because Zach believed, sorry, that this thing, this entity presence in the woods wants to be spoken to kind of creatively and artistically in an artistic fashion. Yeah. And then Dr. Wendell's more like, no, it's about science. And she has all these like, ap like apparatus eye or a apparatuses, a apparatuses. I want to say apparatus. There's a, there's a very complex, uh, sound system, like, like a sonic thing that's going on. Yeah. But come to find out what they're talking about is not bullshit. There is this large stone, which I think represents like, mother nature maybe mm -hmm. but basically like nature can communicate and control everything around yeah everything has a vibration and a language that she's able to have found a way to record uh, but and there's a big hole in this phallic looking stone pillar and there's a book and dr wendell believes that the book is the best way to communicate with this thing and then she finds she decides that they need to make a sacrifice really she's in cahoots with zach mm -hmm. Like they're procuring people to maybe sacrifice and maybe they have, but it's not working. She also says something like you need to be open to it. Mm -hmm. So I think Martin, which actually you bringing up him cutting his foot, maybe the fact that nature had sort of embedded itself in him made him more open to it. Mm -hmm. So they're about to sacrifice Martin when um, Alma is able to successfully disarm Zach and Dr. Wendell. They're both killed, yeah. Killed. And that's basically the end. Like, there is an attempt prior to that for Alma to leave, but there's, like, this fine mist that is, like, seep it's like a toxin seeping in that's, like... That the mushrooms are kind of spitting out. Yeah, that's controlling them so they cannot leave. <laughs> so the end of the film, Alma says to Martin, like, hey, let me get you out of here, but we don't know if she's able to do that. Or if something has happened to her, because uh, she has to get shot with an arrow as well. Um, but that's the end. Mm -hmm. All right. What did you think? I, again, I liked uh, a lot of the ideas behind it. I just, the energy level was very low for me. And I think it, it where it start from where it starts to where it ends, it's on a, a kind of a predictable trajectory besides the very interesting ideas about nature, which, you know, if you're familiar with Wheatley's filmography, the, a lot of his earlier works kind of dealt with these rural settings and pagan rituals and, uh, uh, the the terror of nature per se uh, and, and I, I dig all that I like all that as opposed to some of his later like sleek genre works like Free Fire which I didn't really care for or um, uh, I'm like or Rebecca per se but I think he, he works much better in this kind of the, the mystery of nature. Um, it was shot by Nick Gillespie, uh, who has uh, worked on uh, Killis and the camera and electrical department, and I think it's got a really great score by Clint Mansell. Um, Wheatley has previously uh, attempted th this kind of psychedelic thing he's doing here as well, like in a field in England, and those are interesting moments utilizing Dr. Wendell's uh, Haley Squires um, the, the lights at night and uh, the, and and also within Zach's tent, I thought were beautifully shot. But like a lot of you know what psychedelic imagery, I, I it to, to me it feels like he's trying to do kind of like a, a a Maya Darren thing. So I liked how it looked. I did like those psychedelic components, but it happens in like four different scenes. And I think after the second time, I was like, okay, this, yeah. like the effect diminished. Like on the third time, it diminished, and then at the end, I'm just like, this feels a little repetitive. Um, I did really like the story as it pertained to nature controlling the environment. Mm -hmm. I thought that was super A plus strong. I didn't think this film needed, I don't know why they felt the need to include the pandemic or them being isolated. I feel like that had nothing to do with this research scientist visiting this area to check on someone and then getting stuck by nature. Like why do we need the pandemic? It, it's almost used so sparingly, it doesn't matter, even though it hints at things like, well, this there's been families that have been escaping into the woods and then disappearing. Um, well, I, we heard somehow, I don't know how I heard Ben Wheatley talking about this movie. Was it like before? Probably, the, yes, before the But he says like it was a choice and that, he explains why he did it, but to me it just makes, like it's gonna make this film seem like like there's a date stamp on it. Oh, for sure. I mean, a lot of the films. I would I would not have included, but I'm not making anyone's movies. Um, the other thing I didn't care for is the actors playing Martin and Alma, I thought had such a different tone from Zach and Dr. Wendell. Zach and Dr. Wendell were almost on the level of like, I, I thought it was kind of campy. Sure, yeah. Like 
And what? and every and because I think Dr. Wendell, that actor, looks like that lady from Mad TV, and then the faces she was making, I was always on the verge of kind of giggling looking at her. <laughs> I liked Haley Squires, but then I probably probably like camp more than you do. But Haley Squires, who's really well known for her devastating role in uh, I, Daniel Blake from Ken Loach, which is, uh, I don't think that film should win the palm, but she's very good in it. Uh, so this is kind of the, the only other thing I'm familiar with her in. I thought she was kind of fun. I liked the grays in her hair that signified, like it's kind of what I wanted Robin Wright's hair to look like in Land. Um, but she, she was giving me Barbara Steele as Lady Scientist. And if, you're, and if you're familiar with Barbara Steele, um, great face. Uh, and Barbara Steele did play a lady scientist in the film Piranha. So she's very much giving me those. But movies. I like Camp as well. It's just like we have like four characters and two of them are kind of almost comical. And sure. Other, like Alma I thought was played very serious, like very appropriate for what I thought the story was. Yeah, the two so of I, the guide, yeah. So they kind of took me out a little bit. Sure. But, but, but... She like if you pluck that character out and put it somewhere else, I think it would have worked really well. Sure, Doctor Wendell's character, um, especially because it's it's mentioned that uh, Martin and Doctor Wendell exchange like a fervent a, a, uh, chain of letters that suddenly stops that that suggested something else was going on. Also, as well. I think what didn't work for me, particularly with Doctor Wendell, because we see more passion in Zach. Like he seems like he has this sort of religious fervor about. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening in nature. But Dr. Wendell, who's a scientist, her... She, I don't think that character showed the kind of uh, enthusiasm and fanaticism, if that's a word, yeah. that she should have. Because to take a, like, a scientist and get them over that hump to believe in like sure. this thing, you know, there was proof. Like she had proof. She had like recordings and data. But then there's a scene where she's like sitting at the piano with all these pictures, sort of playing for, I think, the stone. Well, yeah, that's when the reveal happened. Right, and I think that that, that, that character never really showed like how she kind of like went over the edge. Because what she, because what was happening was real. I don't know, and that didn't work for me so well, but anyway. Sure, yeah, it, it, it just feels like a, a little long, a little labored. Um despite great ideas and, and familiar ideas, especially if you like Ben Wheatley. Um, yeah. What would you give this movie? Two and a half out of five. I'm going to give it three out of five. Oh, okay. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.